our, our manager was also their manager, and he came and he said, look, how would you feel about joining Fleetwood Mac? Um, and we went, yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, I, for me, I was 20. The idea of joining Fleetwood Mac was pretty fantastic. So Mick Fleetwood came to our house and um, Mick said, look, I, I can't rehearse with you at the moment because I need to get away and get my head together, you know, because of the wife mar marital situa situation. And we'll meet up in the States to carry on with this abandoned tour. Great. The upshot is that we got to the States and Mick didn't turn up. And we're at the first gig and there are thousands of people at the gig, you know, waiting for us to go on. And we're going, well, where's Mick? And uh, he's not there. And then, um, so we said, well, we can't go on. And the promoter said, you know, you need to go on. If you don't go on, we're going to su we'll sue you, obviously. You can't, you know, what am I going to do with all these people? So we went on and did the show. Uh, we then come off and hear that Mick Fleetwood's been phoning. This is what we heard. I'm not saying this is what happened. What we heard is Mick Fleetwood is phoning the state saying, I hear there's a band of people calling themselves Fleetwood Mac. I have no idea who these people are. And, of course, that was it, you know. The, and we're going, why is he doing this? What's happening? So we're waiting for Mick to come out. But in the meantime, we're being threatened to being... People are saying, you're going to end up in jail. Well, you know, we just didn't know what to do. So immediately the manager goes, well, we, we'll bill it as the new Fleetwood Mac to cover the legalities of it, you know, while we're waiting for Mick to come out. But it was getting... It was just horrible. It was a horrible feeling. And um, it's probably the most long-term damaging thing that's ever happened to, to me and I'm sure with Kirby yeah. in our lives because it went on for years. You know, people were thought, well, you know, they, read, they believed what they read in the papers that we went out there trying to pinch the name of Fleetwood Mac, you know, as a completely bogus band. And it was a setup. We'd been set up. I've been thinking about what you have done to me. The damage is much deeper than you'll ever see. prompted me to write that song was being hurt and it was hurtful it was um, you know to be branded as kind of liars and cheats the only one who knows the truth man that's him me and you i think we both felt when we got back to england we'd probably never work again you know i just wanted to go and hide away which is what i did actually i went to stay with my in-laws in the West Country, who had a hotel, and I spent the summer peeling potatoes and doing the washing up. And, because I just didn't want anything to do with the music business. But I did take my little Revox tape recorder with me and set it up down in the basement where all the kind of tinned food was. And one afternoon I went down there and wrote, why did you do it? And recorded it on a demo. My friends in this do the things I see. And then they hear more every day But I know they never understand it Because it was no accident you planned it Why did you do it? It, it was traumatic. I, I can't pretend that it wasn't, you know. I, I was pretty messed up by it. Why did you do it? I can't believe that somebody would damage other people so much for such a long time and not come clean about it. Why did you do it? And, you know, this year is the first time we've had any relief from this situation because somebody kind of anonymously sent us court papers. I didn't know until this year that Mick Fleetwood had to admit in court that he'd been to our house. I didn't know that. The only one who knows the truth, man, that's him, me and you. I got the documents, old documents, you know, from bloody... 35 years ago, where he was in court and he had to admit that he came to our house and had a meeting about forming a new fleet with Mac. Mm. But you imagine the amount of dam damage, over three decades of damage being done before we can actually say anything about it. Once I'd got that information, 
I said, I'd like to do an interview now and say, OK, we can say this because he's actually admitted what's always been kind of unsaid. I've been thinking about what you have done to me The damage is much deeper than you'll ever see Hit me like a hammer to my head I wonder where you push or where you led Why did you do it? Why did you do that pain to me? Two. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.